Hello again. Today we will talk about linked lists and references. You all know what this is. This is a computer memory. These are RAMs for random access memory. This memory is reset each time you turn on your computer. It doesn't keep information when the computer is not on. It is used by programs to temporarily store information. The unit of measure is a byte. A byte is a sequence of 8 bits to store a character. We talk about kilobytes, or about a thousand bytes, a megabyte, a gigabyte, a terabyte these days, and even beyond. As I said, this memory is used by computer programs to store information. For example, you want to store a character. You want to store a string. You want to store an integer. You want to store a float or even complex objects, like here I have a record encompassing a name, Fred, and a date for birth date. You can also store lists, lists of different objects. Let's zoom in and assume a virtual representation of this memory. In this grid, each cell is a byte to store a character, and each cell has an address in memory, so we can reference it. So each cell can be addressed or accessed individually by referencing it using its address. This is what we call a reference. Now, if we want to store a character, it will use one of those spaces. For example, I would put a C in there. In reality, it's not the character C that is stored, but its representation in the ASCII table. C is 99, which is the binary sequence 1100011. That's the binary of 99. Where in memory is that character C stored? I don't know. And I don't really don't have to care about that. It doesn't really matter as long as the program can access it when it needs it. Now, if I'm storing an integer, it will take two spaces. For example, I'm storing the number 272. Why two spaces? Well, it has nothing to do with the fact that there are three digits 275. It has to do with the binary representation of 275, which is a set of seven zeros followed by one, three zeros, one, two zeros, one, one, which is a sequence, a minimum sequence of nine bits, which is more than eight bits, then we need two positions. If I have a long number, uh, then like for example 20 million something, uh, then I would need four sets of 8 bits. Okay, This is the code for the 2,170,301. But suppose I want to store in a container more than just one integer. Let's say I need to store 10 integers, an array of 10 integers. In many programming languages, you can allocate space and say, I want to store 10 times one integer. Knowing that an integer requires two bytes, I would need 20 bytes allocated for those integers. This is what we call an array. What is interesting here is that those integers are contiguous. That means the spaces used are one directly following the other inside the main memory. I can store information in there. For example, I have three numbers. I put them in there in the first three spots. What do I have in the other seven remaining spots? I really don't know. They are actually initialized with random bits, so it can be anything. I have to be careful how I use them. I need to know how many I put in there, and I have to be very careful when I traverse this array so that I do not go beyond the 10 integers, because the 11th position is not part of the array that I reserved in the first place. It can contain something else which is unknown. Now this array is fixed at 10 integers. I can put less than 10 integers, like here I have three numbers, but I can't make it grow. If suddenly I need to store more than what I anticipated when I allocated these 10 positions, then I'm stuck because as I said, the 11th position is not mine and can 
already be used by the program for something else, and I can't simply write over it. In other words, when I allocate space like this for an array, it would be the exact space I requested. It doesn't grow, it doesn't shrink. If I want to create a container for some elements, uh, and I don't know a priori how many I will have, I would like a container that grows and shrinks at will. So an array is not appropriate for this case. This is where a list is important. I can use space and memory for each element I need. These elements are stored in nodes, and these nodes are scattered in my main memory. They are not contiguous, and to keep the sequence, I have to link them somehow. So the node is an object that contains the element I want to store, and then I have something called a reference. The day I add another element in my list, a new node, will be created to contain it, and the reference of the previous node would reference the second node I just created. You can see that these are not contiguous. They can be anywhere in my memory, but the reference from one to the next allows me to get the ordering of these elements. I know this is the first, this is the second. Once I have access to the first element, the reference stored in the first element first node will tell me where the second element is. If I add a third element in the list, then the second node would reference this third node containing the new element and following this chain of references starting from the first one can traverse in order my whole list until getting to the last node which, tell me, which would tell me that there is no other node after it by simply not referencing any other node. You can see here that the third node has an element 272 in reference to nothing. So there are no following elements after it next in the list. That nothing, we actually give it a name uh, depending upon the language. Some people call it null, some people call it nil, some people call it none. The advantage here is that this list can grow as I see fit. I can add more, even more than 10, uh, I don't have to anticipate beforehand how many elements I will store. As long as I have empty spaces in my main memory, the list can grow. It shrinks too by simply removing a node and adequately adjusting references. The disadvantage though is that this list can only contain integers, or at least the same kind of elements. Another representation or implementation in our case would be the following. So here, the node does not contain the number, but the node, in addition to the reference to the next node, contains a reference to a place where that number is stored. You see, I have a reference to 101 in the first node, a reference to 175 in the second node, and a reference to 272 in the third node. So what is the advantage here? Well, the advantage is that now that I have uh, uh, in the node a reference to an element contained, that element can be anything. You can see here I have a list and the reference to the element is referencing a space where I have a number and a string, a number and a string, a number and a string. So now I can have lists that can grow and shrink and can contain any kind of objects. Now in order to be able to use such a data structure, what do I need? What do I need to access it? I can't access the second element directly. I have to traverse the list to get to it. I can traverse the list to the last element, like here I have 272 and Ali, but to start the traversal, what do I need?